Hello folks, welcome back to the channel Android Made Easy. So guys, ever wondered, even you can have your own e-commerce applications like a food delivery app or a clothing app, something like this. So and you want people to download your applications. So all of these applications have the data stored in one place in the server and they get that data from the internet and they show in your app screen. So today's tutorial will be everything about how to get data from the internet. Let's get started guys. Steps written here throughout our video to complete the entire tutorial of JSON passing. So what is JSON exactly? JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. What is it? It is a kind of a format that is used to store data and then exchanging the data or getting the data from a server, a web page or an app page. So how does it look like? So here I have a dummy JSON file, okay? It's a JSON file of a random restaurant where all the food products or food details of that restaurant are stored in the form of a JSON. So if you look carefully, JSON starts with the box bracket here. The box bracket is called JSON array. So everything inside this box bracket is in the inside, it's, it's inside a JSON array. After that box bracket, you can see a curly braces here. Curly braces is called JSON object. So JSON array has several JSON objects inside it. Now inside this curly braces, you can see product ID and its value called one, product name and its value called chai, unit price and its value called 18 and so on. So what is it? These things are called key value pairs. So the major concept of data storage of JSON is key value. Data in JSON is stored in the form of a key value pair. And these key value pairs are stored inside a JSON object, which is further stored inside a JSON array. This is the data that we'll be fetching today on our Android screen, and we'll be we'll be displaying the various products of the food items like pie, tang, and uh, various things that Chef entered in a form of a list view. So starting with the first step, we have something called make URL class. Now going to Android Studio, I have made a class called URL. Simple concept, right click and making a new class. We all are familiar with it. New Java class, okay? So URL class is nothing, but I've just defined two strings. That is the two URLs that we'll be using in our tutorial today to fetch the data. So first URL is called fetch data, which is this URL. This URL is nothing but here, the URL of this web page where all the JSON data is stored. And the second URL is all about fetching the images of each data. So Second URL is here. Now the actual URL is still web foods and a slash sign after that. Okay. After the slash sign, if you can see something called two dot JPG, which is nothing but I've appended the product ID along with that. Product ID is coming from this page. So if you want to display the images of a particular object, you have to append the ID. For example, product ID name, it is Thai. If I go here, and make it one dot jpg the photograph or the image of a chai comes in so the url given on the android is still web foods slash after that in our code inside the for loop we will be appending the product id of each food item that we'll fetch here till your second step we have something called make model class now what is a model class here i've made a model class called food items which is used to store all those details which will be requiring fetching the data or to show the data on the list view id for product id name of the food for the product name coming from the web page price for the product price coming from the web page stock for something called unit in stock coming from the json file and image url to fetch the url of the each product id and then i have defined a getter and setters of each of these five fields how to do to getter setter just right click generate Getter and setters, okay, guys, and then you'll automatically get and setter will be done for the each objects, each uh, variable. Sorry, third thing is something called list view in XML file. So go to your activity underscore main dot XML. Here I've just drag and drop the list view, okay. So, what is the list view? List view is a kind of a view in Android which is used to club all the items together in the form of a vertical scrollable list. So all the data is inserted in the form of a list. It's called list view. Here the width and the height is defined as match parent, which is the, the entire screen. And ID has been given to identify this uh, list view uniquely in, so in our main activity class. ID has been given list view, fetch food details. Fourth thing here is something called JSON parser class, which is the main class we'll be writing our entire code in to 
fetch the data from the JSON uh, and using the concepts of internet and how to data data comes from internet in the Android. Uh, so we extend this class to an async task. Uh, I'm sure you know what is asynchronous task. We had done this in a previous tutorial of uh, when you were studying the splash screens concept. So your asynchronous task is nothing but a background UI thread, background thread that runs. Uh, uh, so here I've defined some values, initializing some things, so declaring some things, something called an array list of type model class food items whose name I've given food details. I've defined something called buffered input stream and instance of this class input stream. What is buffer input stream? Buffer input stream is used to read uh, data from, uh, uh, from, uh, from you are, we'll read this data from a JSON file in the form of characters and then these data this form of character is stored inside a buffer internal array we have defined the class json array string whose name of given result and a progress dialog progress dialog i'll be telling you what is it in the coming part of this video so i've defined a constructor json parser who just initialize few things this dot activity this dot context and the progress dialog so as we know, you all are familiar with the three main methods of asynchronous class. That is the main UI, main uh, background thread that runs is on do and background. So do and background will have the entire code of fetching the data from that web page. And then on pre-execute is something uh, that user will be seeing on the screen. So what happens exactly is the time the code written in do and background is running in the background thread and fetching the data from the internet, the user not see the blank screen on the app page so something called loading bar or a progress bar like waiting 80 percent process done completing kind of a message user can see on the screen at the time the data has been uh, fetched on the background so on pre-execute is mainly you should define the progress bar here so progress bar dialog of dismiss if there is any progress dialog before the app is launched Progress dialog set message. I have written your loading. You can write waiting uh, till the data is load, hang in there, anything to keep the user tuned till the data is fetched on from the internet. And the progress dialog show show this progress dialog on the screen. And then progress dialog set on cancel listener. Uh, so after the data is fetched from the UI, we don't need the progress dialog now. So it should vanish automatically, and the data that is fetched from the internet should be visible on the app page. Coming to do and background. The first step here, I have some, made something called HTTP URL connection. This is a class of Android which is used to uh, connect to a URL or connect to a web page using the uh, HTTP library or for following the hypertext transfer protocol. So initially, I've defined its uh, in its object HTTP URL connection, which I've defined null. I have not given any URL uh, link to connect to. We come into the try block. As I've defined URL, whose instance I've defined URL. Now, and inside this bracket, I have to give the URL or of the web page to which I have to connect to. That is this URL. Now, where we have defined this URL inside our URL class, whose name I've given fetch data. So coming here, URL class dot fetch data. This will put the URL of the web page inside this instance. Now we'll connect. Now this HTTP URL connection, which was initially I've defined, declared null, will have something called this data, the URL inside this string. So HTTP URL connection, URL dot open connection. Now what does URL have? This data. So in, sh in short, this HTTP URL connection will got a command to open this web page. So after it's open, now we'll read the data from this web page. So input stream, which I've, which I've defined it above, new buffer input stream, HTTP URL connection dot get input stream. It will read the data in the form of sequence of characters, which will be stored in, in a internal buffer array. Now something called result is equal to read stream. Now read stream is a method which I've made, it's nothing but an entire process of reading the data from line to line and then appending the entire data into a string builder. This is a method read stream whose return type is string because the entire data read is in the form of a string. Okay. So buffer reader, buffer reader is equal to new buffer reader. Buffer reader is a class of Android 
which is used to read the data in the form read the sequence of characters it is used to read the text from a sequence of characters so buffer reader will have nothing but input string which had sequence of characters inside it now i've defined the string builder the major concept of string builder is a mutable concept of string builder we're using here is its append method it is a method called append in the class string builder which we'll be using so that it appends all the data read line by line in and we get the entire data so string line i've defined a uh, table of type string here we come to the try block while the line is equals to buffer reader dot read line so there's a method of a method of this class buffer reader which reads the text of the entire line so we read data from one line how is the how is the hierarchy going here first we get data in the form of characters that is from the class buffer input string then we came into the class buffer reader that is reading a text in the form in one line from the entire sequence of characters now each line data of each line is being appended in a string builder so the, this is the form of format of reading the entire data of the web page after the end, line by line data was appended inside the string builder we just converted into form of dot to string and we went to return the result had nothing but read string whose return type is string so the entire data is upon the url has been already read now the entire data that has been read in the form of a string we will put in the json array that we do inside the on post execute method we made we had declared the json array up, up above there json array new json array and we put entire result here and and in the json array the entire result entire data of that web page goes in now if it is not null we start a for loop which which goes to the json i dot length inside this for loop we have defined an object of this model class so every time a new object gets created per product so now the main concept of how the data from the json has been is been reading from this web page so food items dot id now we we'll start putting a data food items dot this id what will it will have json array dot get json object index initially suppose the index is 0 that is the json object first json object this part here it falls okay index 0 dot get int product id so product id here is in the in is a numeric value 1 2 5 uh 9 at this we are showing in the form of int product now get int now we have to give a key pair as i said the data in the json is for stored in the form of key value pairs so if we give the key product id automatically the value 1 will be stored inside this food items dot id similarly food items dot name of the food we get the json object its corresponding index we get the string format and we just pass the key product name product name same for the price unit price and units on stock unit price and units in stock now fifth is the image url now food items for image url will have nothing called image we already have defined the we have defined the url here we just have to append the product id now that we have already fetched the product id we will food items dot id dot dpg now url of all the product is being stored here now we just add to our list that we had made food details up and we'll add the food items here now the entire data has been added into an array list we had defined the list view in our example file we will find the id of that list view we know how to do that find view by id r dot i dot list view fetch food details that is this id list view fetch food details and then this last two lines of custom adapter we will see we are done with json parser thing we will make this xml we will see the custom adapter class and then we will see what is the these two lines are about right we need in our ui to have a image that is a product image then we want its name price and the stock that we have uh, text from the json parser class to display in the ui so i just made a new layout file again the same concept right click new layout resource file and i've given the name of single and it's called single data.xml okay and here i have put an image view for the product image a text view for product name one more text view for the product price and one more text view for product stock you can give all the features like width height style bold color according to your need 
So this XML layout file is all about the customized view that UI that the user will see on the screen. Now we've made something called custom adapter. This is the main concept, very, very important concept that we use today. Uh, just pardon me for the spelling mistake that I've done. You can rename your file here, no problem with it. So what are, what are adapters in Android? So adapter is an array adapter is a concept of Android, which is the main bridge between the UI or the list view and the data source that is a JSON uh, file. So it is used to treat the result coming from the JSON and help display in the form of a list view on our UI. That is the main work of array adapter. I have defined an array list food list of type food items. I have made a con constructor where I have just passed the context. What is the context? Single data layout file is a context and then array list has passed. Now you see you can something call an override method called get view. Just press control plus O and then you can override that method. You will see the op uh, option of get view. I cannot see because I've already override this method. Something called get view which has int position that is quite uh, comparable to the index of that JSON file. Convert to as a customized view that we'll be using. Now what is layout inflator? Layout inflator concept is to convert the layout XML file into a view object that can be used by this array adapter class to customize the view. So what are we doing? Just we are doing nothing. We are taking inflating a view. We are inflating a layout file. Which layout file? Single data. So we are inflating this XML layout file into a view object, which can be done, which can be later used by this custom adapter class to customize the UI. Same concept, text view name, text view price, text view stock, and image view. Just finding the IDs that was defined here. ID text view stock, ID text view price, similarly same. Okay. Now we made the object of food item class dot get index. That is get position. Okay. Now we just set the data. We got fetch the data here. Setting the data was done here. Now we're doing the getting of data in the other adapter class. Name dot set text. What should go inside this text view name? A product name should go inside this. And where's the product name stored? Inside food items dot get name of the food. Food items dot get price. Food items dot get stock. Now get name of the food. Get name of the food has something called product name coming from JSON object. The product name Thai will be stored inside this. So we have already stored name, price, and stock. Now for the images directly to the set image, I've just used a library called Glide. Okay, you can use this library as well. Uh, I'll just tell I'll just tell you where to use it. In my build file, build file, I've added glide here. Yeah, bump tick glide. This implementation and annotation processor. These two libraries I've added here, which will with them which I've used here directly to set the image. So glide dot with context. So wherever which layout file we are using this in single data of XML load image URL. Image, we need to load the image coming from the image URL into image, into this image view. That's it. We have done. We just return this convert view. That is our own customized view. So we are done with custom XML view, custom adapter class. Everything is done. Every coding is done. Just call the JSON parser class in the main activity. Because what we have in main activity, the main list view that is coming from activity underscore main. This list view should have entire things being displayed. So main activity in the on create method, JSON passes, object I've made, new JSON passer, activity, control.